Tenma forces a voice man to go back to the city so Tenma can save the Turkish district. The only problem I have with this scene is they're confident that they'll find Johan just hanging around, but it's no big deal. Then we see the skinheads deciding to burn both Heckel and Dieter alive, which is fine by me. Now if they also add Tenma to the pile, I'll even light the torch myself. Also, the Nazis are obviously shown to be complete hypocrites, but that is most likely intentional. Tenma then visits Aisha's friend looking for Dieter and gives her the news. Tenma completely ignores her reaction to them though and wants to see the manager. He also claims that he will prevent every further death from Johan. And boy oh boy are we gonna hold him to that standard. This line here is a wonderful fuck up on Narki's part because Tenma is now officially aware that he is allowing people to die as long as Johan remains unhindered. Well then the two, we still don't know her name by the way, go visit some men in a bar to warn them and the guys are not satisfied with just not believing Tenma but also seem to think it's necessary to be massive dicks to them. Then some old guy enters the room and says, Tenma is indeed pretty sus, but a completely unrelated Japanese general helped some other Turkish guys a hundred years ago, so let's do what he says. Every single person in this room is either an asshole or an idiot. Most both. Lovely. The baby is bragging to two women about how good the food in the show is going to be, then Anna sits down and pulls a gun on him off screen, which she somewhat didn't notice. I'm not blaming him too much for that though, she did it without making a single sound. Apparently an ability that she shares with her brother. Also, she might be a vampire because the show went out of its way to show how reflective this window is. The following dialogue is just hot air again. The only mildly interesting bit is that the baby apparently knows that Johan left the message, but didn't check on it himself. It's not a big deal apparently, Anna checked it and was back the day after. Anna tries to force information about the main fire out of the baby, but he tells it the wrong place. He also wets his pants because she's so scary just like Johan. And to be fair, unlike Johan, Anna could actually beat his ass. Also, it might be a lot more believable that she's terrifying if the show wasn't also trying to portray her so emotionally vulnerable. For example, imagine she set these lines with complete calm. You know, the way Johan's scariness is also described by the show. But Monster wants to have its cake and eat it as well. It is very lucky for Dieter and Heckel that the place the baby gave her happened to be their prison. Heckel can guess the real place that the main fire will be started in because he grew up in the city. Lucky, but it makes enough sense. What doesn't make any sense though is the fact that the Turks apparently couldn't guess the place despite living here long enough that there is no official Turkish district. Whoops. The Turks and Tenma celebrate their victory, the Turks are shown to be dumbasses once again, and Tenma leaves soon to treat the injured. Which the Turks apparently don't care about since they started a party anyway, portraying the lot of them as assholes and idiots once again. Is now Kurosawa just trying to paint them as complete morons? Also, good man. While Anna and Dita head to the main fireplace, Eckel actually steals the carpet. Then he runs into Tenma by pure chance, who asks where Dita went, then apparently magically forces Eckel to follow him. Nina and the local Nazi arsonist have a talk about Johan, with another golden quote. Tenma then apparently knocks out the dude, no questions asked. Don't worry, he will not stay that useful. Dieter and Anna fan you all over Tenma a bit, then Nazi arsonist lights his lighter, which Tenma tackles into the gasoline like a complete retard. Obviously not without shouting, don't shoot, which actually stops Anna. So basically every bit of damage that happens next is Tenma's fault. Another important thing to notice here is that the choice is shown as a binary. Shoot the guy or not. Somehow, it never even came to Naoki that shooting the guy in the hand would also stop him from lighting anything on fire, and it would also be a lot safer than hoping he dies quick enough from a headshot. This issue will occur a lot more often throughout the show, and it seems that Naoki genuinely never thought of the fact that you can shoot someone non-lethally. Dieter then takes Heckel's carpet and uses it to extinguish the flames. Obviously this is supposed to be ironic, but I also want to remind you that this is still an important possession of some antiquarian they just burned. Then, with some bizarre music, Anna finds Tenma who apparently stole a boat and is now sailing up the mine.
she tells him that she found out Johan has a split personality. This is apparently supposed to be a big deal and even excuses Tenma's behavior somehow. Tenma and the crew then look at the place Johan indicated, which is just this message. The message implies that Johan is afraid of the own monster inside him, which makes Tenma conclude that Johan has two personalities. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock, Anna just told you that. Also, as I mentioned, this is treated as a huge deal somehow. Why somehow? Because this is not true at all, and the show will completely ignore this plot point after hand-waving it away in a mere two episodes. Which is a bit of a shame again, considering that if you showed Anna basically switching between complete stone-cold killer and vulnerable young woman, this plot point might have even worked. Although it also would have 100% been used to spare Johan despite absolutely not deserving it. <laughs> 